So, you may have already seen our video presenting our Earthship inspired house, which we call Aquaship because it also uses aquaponics. It will look a bit like this rendering. In this video, I will briefly explain what an Earthship is, what our house will do, and why we made some different choices. First of all, what do we expect from our house? It's a house that will heat us, keep us cool and ventilated in summer, provide us with lights and feed us. Food is very important. It will also give us easy access to clean water. We came up with all these points by looking at airships. So what's an earthship? They are houses that were invented by Michael Reynolds in the 70s and they do two things. Firstly, they are very pleasant to live in and secondly, they make maximum use of materials that were considered waste, especially at the time. So on the north side, there is a thermal mass wall built with tires filled with rammed earth and an additional mound of earth behind it. On the other side, there are two sections. One is a greenhouse and the other is the living area. The whole structure has a large, well-insulated roof and the greenhouse section has a central corridor with planters. Another clever feature is that in winter the sunlight heats up this thermal mouth, which keeps the house warm. And in summer, sunlight is minimized to just feed the plants and prevent the house from overheating. There are also openings that allow hot air to escape, creating a draft that draws in fresh air supplied by Canadian valves. There are also photovoltaic cells for electricity production and these houses normally use a lot of materials such as cans and glass bottles as building materials and also for decoration. We chose not to use tires because today we are already seeing more and more companies recycling tires to produce oil, gas and steel. There are even teenagers who have started trying this. Well, with all this we can create new products uh, or produce energy, so it would be a shame to decycle these tires forever. The same goes for cans. We're not in the 70s anymore. They are often returnable and easily recyclable, so I don't see any point in putting them in a wall today. So there we go. The differences between a traditional earthship and our house side by side. So we have a tire wall on one side and a reinforced concrete wall on the other. We have a foundation slab that immediately modulates all the basins we need for plants and fish. And on the earthship side, well, there is at most a slab. On the earthship side, the tires are filled with earth. We'll have to double our concrete wall with earth so that we get one meter of thickness for the thermal mass. The roof. Earthship roofs are relatively light, well insulated wooden structures. Only a small part of our roof will be built like this. The rest is a concrete slab that we will cover with soil and vegetation. This is good for durability and allows water to be filtered directly on the roof. It also air conditions the house and gives some of the surface back to nature. In terms of photovoltaics, airships often have them on the facade, but we will place them on the roof. This way we keep as much light as possible available because the photovoltaic cells will not take up any window space. We're not in New Mexico um, where there's probably more light than where we are. Otherwise, it's fairly similar. We have two sections, a greenhouse and a living area, which are defined by two walls with varying numbers of windows. Another difference is the accessibility of the pipes. In an airship, there are already a lot of pipes for the grey water management system, but we will have even more for the aquaponics and also for ventilating the greenhouse. So we are keeping most of the pipes accessible under the corridor, under the removable floorboards. Otherwise, the planting beds are quite similar. They are planted with gravel at the bottom to fix a lot of good bacteria to purify the grey water. The amount of sunlight is also similar, but we are maximizing sunlight for the winter by installing photovoltaic panels on the roof. This also optimizes the angle of capture of the cells. 
In terms of ventilation, there's a big difference with the airship. In the airship, the hot air that leaves draws fresh air first into the living space, whereas in our house, the fresh air goes directly into the greenhouse so that the greenhouse basically manages its own climate. In the Earthship, the cool air first passes through the living space and then goes into the greenhouse. This means that we have to use an additional dual flow ventilation in the living space. It also uses a Canadian well, um, but using a separate system is actually a good idea as passive ventilation in the Earthship will only properly work in summer. This means that we can ventilate the house throughout the year and better manage humidity and temperature in the living space. In terms of hot water production, earthships use convectors with tanks either directly on the roof or inside the house. In our house, the same convectors will heat a thermal mass of 2000 liters. The advantage is that since we don't have much thermal mass on the north side, this thermal mass not only produces hot water on demand, but can also feed a conventional floor heating system. We are also planning uh, to use a wooden stove that can also heat up that thermal mass. This will give us in total a greater resilience in winter, which can be longer and harsher than in New Mexico. And the special feature of our aqua ship will be fish farming in a natural pool. The fish will feed the plants and the plants will clean the water for the fish. If you want to stay up to date with the project, subscribe now and I'd be very happy if you could like the video. Thank you very much in advance.